Hey, welcome back to science. Today we are doing a lab, or at least we're going to watch a time-lapse version of a lab that you would have done if you were here in class. In order to do this lab, I had to go for a hunt first. But I'm glad to tell you that even though it's a rather rare species right now, my hunt was successful. found some snow. I had to go to Lake to Mount Ripley to find it, but I collected a bunch of snow, put some into a beaker. So this also has water in it. We're start we're going to start with a slush water. I'll be setting that on a hot plate and then I'm going to turn on the heat. All I'm going to do is is see what happens. Right now, Draw a graph. What do you think the graph will look like as we heat slush water from, from now until boiling? I'm going to let it boil for three or five minutes. Again, I'm going to do this on time lapse, so what takes 20 minutes for me is going to take about 90 seconds for you guys. It'll be fine. Make that graph ahead of time. A couple little bits of information. While there's snow in here, I'm going to only have, a, have this set to, to three. Once the snow is gone, to speed things up, I'm going to crank it up to high. That's not perfect, but I'm, it's kind of the way that we, we cheat the system to make things work a little bit better for us. Okay, stop the video. Go ahead and, and make your predictive graph, and then watch what happens. Okay, here's our setup. You can see that the slush water is at about zero degrees Celsius, 0 0.1 it's reading right now. I'm gonna come in to where we'll set up for this time lapse. Once I start this, it's actually gonna show us the graph. It'll, it'll build the graph as it goes along. So that'll be kind of neat to be able to watch that go and see the, the slush mixture as we go along. It's only take you about 90 seconds, but pay attention because at the end I've got some questions for you based on the graph that is developed. If you have not yet made your predictive graph, go ahead and do that. Okay, I let this run a few minutes longer. I let the gra graph run a few minutes longer. I want you to notice a couple of things. First, take a look at how much water is left in our beaker. And second, let's take a look at this graph. Because this, to me, is really fascinating. I changed the scaling on it a little bit better so it was easier to see. But notice... This thing was flat for the first, heck, 20 minutes. It was basically flat. And that's how long it took until the ice completely melted. Right around here is when that ice was gone, and we suddenly see the temperature going up. 
Now at that point I did turn the heat up to high and yes this is using the word heat properly because even though this is measuring in time throughout this entire time thermal energy is being transferred was being transferred to that beaker so heat was being added to the beaker. Right around here which is the 37 minute mark or so we started to get boiling and up here it was at a full roiling boil. It stayed that way and that temperature again did not go up. It seemed to have stayed at about 98, 99 degrees Celsius. It's a little bit odd. We thought that it would have happened at 100. Keep in mind these probes are not perfect. There's also something about the boiling point that you will learn in chemistry that makes it not surprising that it was not at exactly 100. But this be brings us to our big question. What the heck is going on here? If you were in class and you built these labs, I would be gr grilling you in the, in the board meeting. Did you have your, your hot plate turned on? And you would say yes. Did you leave the hot plate turned on up here? And you'd say yes. I'd ask if the beaker was on the hot plate and you'd say yes. And I'd say why in the world if thermal energy is being added, was the temperature not going up? It did not go up at all throughout here. It did not go up at all throughout here. Now, some of you are going to say, yeah, but, but, but the, the thermometer or the hot plate was only set at three. Admittedly, I probably should have set it to four. It would have gone a little bit faster. But I've done this lab literally hundreds of times with students and you always get this flat part until the, the snow slush ice is gone. And you always get this flat, flat part once boiling starts. That to me is fascinating. And I'd like you to answer why that happens as your homework. Have a great day. We'll see you later.